Hi friends, in Celtic Irish mythology, the Tua de Danann, meaning the people of the goddess Danu in Gaelic, was an ancient race inhabiting Ireland before the arrival of the Milesians, the ancestors of the modern Irish, and was also known by the earlier name Tua Dei, meaning tribe of the gods. They are thought to represent the main deities of pre-Christian Gaelic Ireland. They were said to have been skilled in magic, and the earliest reference to them relates that, after they were banished from heaven because of their knowledge, they descended on Ireland in a cloud of mist. They were thought to have disappeared into the hills when overcome by the Milesians. The Book of Invasions, a fictitious history of Ireland from the earliest times, treat them as actual people, and they were so regarded by native historians up to the 17th century. In popular legend, they have become associated with the numerous fairies still supposed to inhabit the Irish landscape. The Tua de Danann were one of the great ancient tribes of Ireland. The manuscript, the Annals of the Four Masters, records that they ruled Ireland from 1897 to 1700 BCE. It is said that they landed at the Connacht coastline and emerged from a great mist, bringing a darkness over the sun for three days and three nights with them, and burnt their boats to ensure that they could not think of retreating to them. The rulers of Ireland at the time were the Firbolg, who was unhappy about the new arrivals. The Tua de Danann won the inevitable battle with the Firbolg, but, out of respect for the manner in which they had fought, they allowed the Firbolg to remain in Connacht, while the victors ruled the rest of Ireland. The new rulers of Ireland were civilized and cultured people. The new skills and traditions that they introduced to Ireland were held in high regard by the peoples they conquered. They had four great treasures, or talismans, that demonstrated their skills. The first was the Stone of Fall, which would scream when a true king of Ireland stood on it. It was later placed on the hill of Tara, the seat of the High Kings of Ireland. The second was the Magic Sword of Nuada, which was capable of inflicting only mortal blows when used. The third was the Slingshot of the Sun God Lurch, famous for its accuracy when used. The final treasure was the Cauldron of Dachta, from which an endless supply of food came. The original leader of the Tuadeh was Nuada, but, having lost an arm in battle against the Firbolg champion Shring, it was decreed that he could not rightly be king, as he was no longer unblemished. Brias, a tribesman of Fomorian descent, who seemed to represent the harmful and destructive powers of nature, then became king. His seven-year rule was not a happy one, and he was ousted by his people, who had become disenchanted with hunger and dissent. Nuada was then reinstated as king, having received a replacement arm made of silver. Brias raised an army of Fomorians, and they battled with Nuada at Moitura in County Sligo. The Tuade again prevailed, and the power of the Fomorians was broken forever. However, Nuada was killed by the Fomorian king Balor's poisonous eye, who was himself killed by Lurg, the champion of the Tuade, who then took over as king. The grandsons of the next king Dachda ruled during the invasion of the mighty Milesians, who defeated the Tuade Danann and divided the land between the two tribes, allotting the above ground to the Milesians and the underground to the Tuade, and so they became the bearers of the fairies of Ireland consigned to the underworld, where they became known as the people of the mound. The Milesians used the name of one of the Tua de Danon gods, Eriu, as the name of their new kingdom. Eriu, or Ayr, is still used in modern times as the name of Ireland. Each member of the Tua de is associated with a particular feature of life or nature, but many appear to have more than one association. Many also have by names some representing different aspects of the deity, and others being regional names or epithets. Prominent members include Nuada, the Dachta, who was a chief god, the Morrigan, Dian Secht, Dalbath, Fiacha, and Lurg. Nuada is arguably the most notable member of the Tua de Danann. He was their first king and was married to Buan. 
Nuada is best known from the battle where he loses his arm, which also results in the loss of his kingship. The Dachta played an important part in Celtic mythology. In a number of stories, the Dachta is described as a large man or a giant that owns a club with magical powers. It's also said that the Dachta was a druid and a king that had the power to control everything from the weather to time, and he was also said to be the husband of the Morrigan. The Morrigan was, of course, the goddess of war and battle, death and prophecy, and sovereignty. For greater detail on her, check out my video linked above. The Ansicht was the son of the Dachta and was the healer of the Tuadedanen. Often referred to as the god of healing, he is arguably best known for replacing Nuada's lost arm after it was cut off by the fur bulk with a new silver one. Dalbaith was the grandson of the Dachta and succeeded him as a high king of Ireland. He ruled for ten years before he was killed by his son Fiacha. He was also the first god-king. Fiacha was the son of Dalbaith and was another celebrated high king of Ireland. According to the Annals of Ireland, Fiacha killed his father to take his crown. Fiacha held the throne for ten years until he was killed in a ferocious battle against Egon of Imber. Lurg was often described as a master of crafts and battle. He was the grandson of Balor, whom he killed in the Battle of Magturit. Lurg had a number of magical tools in his possession, such as a fiery spear and a slingstone. He also owned a hound by the name of Phalinis. Other members of the Tuadedanen were Mananan, the god of the sea, who led the Tuade to the underground after their defeat by the Milesians. Angus, who was probably originally associated with youth, love, summer and poetic inspiration. He was the son of the Dachta and Boan, and is also known as Makan Ok, meaning the young boy or young son. Bridget, the goddess of spring, fertility and life. She was associated with wisdom, poetry, healing, protection, smithing and domesticated animals. And Govnu, a god of metal smithing and one of the three Dedana, meaning the three gods of craftsmanship. As always, thank you for watching. Please support me by subscribing and liking and sharing the video. You can also go check out my online store for some cool mythology themed merch. Link in the description below. Till next time, bye bye.